Welcome everyone to another special edition of the Living Transplant Podcast. This week I'm bringing you behind the scenes at the BAMP CST conference and introducing you to some remarkable people who are presenting about their innovation, research about transplant, and how to make the journey much better for potential recipients, donors, caregivers and families, and patients in the system as a whole. Thank you so much for joining me and I'm very excited to bring you different episodes throughout this week, so stay tuned. Today, I am joined by Massimo, who will be discussing his research with xenotransplantation. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Candice, for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm wondering if you can introduce yourself to our audience. Sure, sure. My name is Massimo Mangiola. I'm a transplant immunologist, and I work at NYU Langone Health in New York City. And my job, my bread and butter, if you wish, is histocompatibility, uh, so is the determination of compatibility between a patient and a donor, any organ included, bone marrow transplant, face, hands, and where you is a very busy and challenging place, so I'm challenged by pretty much any type of transplant. So what I do every day is to compare a patient and donors to determine whether there is risk of, of proceeding with transplantation, yeah. Fascinating. At the BAMP CST conference, you discussed the immunology of xenotransplantation, which yes. was thrilling and fascinating for me to get to sit and listen. And a lot of it, of course, went over my head. It was, it was wonderful. I'm wondering if you could explain a little sure. bit about what xenotransplantation is. Absolutely. My pleasure. So xenotransplantation is the transplantation of non-human organs in humans. In this case, xenotransplantation is the transplantation of pig organs into human. Now, of course, you want to say, why would you do that? Uh, <laughs> very good question. Very good question. So, as you know, there is a, a very large discrepancy between the patients that are awaiting organ transplant and an available organ. And this discrepancy, it doesn't seem to be reduced over time. And that is because the system, unfortunately, relies on somebody to die for somebody else to have a second chance in life. And, and also, unfortunately, so the living donation of certain organs, of course, like a kidney or liver, that is not ramping up. And, and, and some is not because there are no uh, living donation, it's that the, the majority of patient and donor are emotionally connected. And so those are like, but there is no increase in altruistic donors. Those that just want to give an organ to a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we, we have to think outside the box right. and, and we say like, how can we, how can we help these people? Considering, unfortunately, so kind of, that some of our patients don't ever get to the finish line. They, right. they stay in the way list for so long, and then unfortunately we lose them, mm -hmm. and, and they never had an opportunity to, to have a, an offer. So for those type of, especially for those type of patients, so the highly sensitized, the broadly sensitized against HLA antigens, we have, it's our responsibility to think outside the box. And Wayne Langone has always been pioneering in these uh, changes in, in mm -hmm. the transplantation world. And our, um, our leader, Dr. Robert Mongo, has started a lot, many, many years ago to, to work on this project of xenotransplantation. We have successfully transplanted in a decedent model. So is is an individual that has that, that was brain dead and donated the, the their body to research. Mm -hmm. and, and we wanted to test, is it in fact true that we can put a kidney organ into a human and those this organ is not rejected immediately. And and Last year, we did two pig kidney transplantation, and this year, we did two heart, pig, pig wow. heart transplantation. So we know now that, that it does work, and now, you know, we, we are approaching the immunology of xenotransplantation, which is what is going 
the, the patient immune, your immune system, what would your immune system do when mm -hmm. we put a pig organ? Because we already know that there is rejection between mm -hmm. human to human. So you can kind of guess it that there will be even much so with pig and human. Mm -hmm. So my job as a transplant immunologist in, in this project is to try to figure out how do we study and how do we um, control the immune system in, in senior transplantation. Wow. From my perspective, since I'm nowhere close to an immunologist, listening about changing certain hormones and genes in pigs to make them smaller and as well as modifying the antibodies, you know, that's a, that's a big thing to do. And, and yes. you've been doing it for, for a while now. Would these changes make those pig organs less likely to reject in a human? That's a very good point. Yes. The short answer is yes. I mean, can you, <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit more about it. Yes, so the, the, the choice of, of pigs as a source of non-human organs is for many reasons. One of the reasons is that there is a, it's, it's a readily available animal. Right. The, the physiology of the organs actually is very similar to that of the human as compared to other animals. Okay. But as you say, they, they grow a little bit larger than us. Mm -hmm. And also, as you mentioned, the, the organs, the pigs in particular, like other animals, they have some, we would call antigens that, that we actually don't express. So our immune system is prepared against this antigen. And the reason is that we, we acquire immunity because we eat pig, right? And so we, we are exposing the guts to these antigens, but also other bacteria have similar antigens. So basically we, we build some sort of immunity. A way, a way to explain this is like thinking about allergy, right? And say, you know, I am allergic to this type of food. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are naturally allergic, if you wish, to, to some of these big antigens that we don't express. Therefore, in naturally, if we'll be transplanted with a native organ, with an organ from a pig that is, hasn't been modified, we would reject it very quickly. Okay. And so it would not help. Mm -hmm. So in time, with studies that were done in baboons and other animals, we have learned which one are the main. And so what we did was to modify the genetics of the pig to abrogate the expression of these allergens. So even mm -hmm. though we have allergy, there is no allergic response to the organ. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we use genetically modified pig to do this organ transplantation. And the experience at NYU Langone shows that they are safe uh, within the first few days post-transplant, which are the days in which you would hyperacute reject the organ. So we were successful in uh, bridging that gap. Uh, now is what next, right? Right. <laughs> Exactly. And before I get to that big question of what next, mm -hmm. thinking about all of those changes that you've made to those organs, would that mean that people would potentially need to take less immunosuppressants or less anti-rejection medication if they received one of those pig organs? Uh, at the moment, not. And mm -hmm. it's just because long-term studies in mm -hmm. humans have never been done. Right. It's always long-term study have always been done in baboons, okay. uh, but baboons are not similar to us in terms of the medication that we give to the baboons to protect. So the immune suppression that you give mm -hmm. to the baboons. So it's not compatible, but that's why in Wayu Langone and Dr. Montgomery has started this, uh, this program. And we are almost at the finish line for doing this study in an extended period. Mm -hmm. Because as I said before, we have bridged the hyperacute rejection and that doesn't occur. So what we need to study now is the rejection, the long-term rejection, right? right. Now, Candice, that's the thing. In, and that's part of my job, right? Mm -hmm. If we understand what causes 
the long-term rejection. We can attempt to genetically engineer pigs so that that mechanism would not occur anymore. So ideally in the long term, better than in humans, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we might be able to reach a point where actually you can have a lower immune suppression and maybe and maybe eventually a point where there is no immune suppression uh, it's a little bit too far so i don't want to give you any, right. <laughs> any uh, you know okay it's a it's, it's a it's a long shot but uh, of course yeah. that, that that's our that's our intent which actually is also the nyu langone philosophy for human to human mm -hmm. the goal for us is not just that of transplanting the goal for us is to improve the quality of life after transplants. Right. So even in human to human, the transplant institute and where you Langone is actively working on, on what is needed to decrease immune suppression in human to human transplants. Because yeah. we know that uh, giving you an organ is only a, a one piece of the puzzle. Right. The rest of your life should be as beautiful and as fulfilling as your life before you had your disease. Mm -hmm. And we are very committed in not forgetting that because the game here for us, is not just the numbers, but really improving the quality of life post-transplant. Wow, that's, that's incredible to hear. Thank you for, for saying that. And thinking about the the number of people who are waiting right now for transplants around the world. It, it feels like that wait list continues to grow and, and thinking we have living donors who step up and like you spoke about anonymous living donors as well, who help that wait list. But how could pig organs support a more equitable system to allow more patients to, to get transplants and, and more people to get off of that wait list? It's a very good point, Candice. Thank you. So it's going to be a phased transition, right? Of mm -hmm. course, it's everything. We need to be cautious, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very exciting moment, but we need to be, we need to be with our feet firm on the ground yes. and make sure that we approach this the right way, mm -hmm. the best way for the patient. So I am I'm envisioning that the, the, the initial step is going to be for those that are the most disadvantaged mm -hmm. in the way least. And so I'm talking about this very highly and broadly sensitized patient with a CPRA of 100% right. that have been sitting in the way list for 15, 20 years and they are getting no offers and they are running out of option for dialysis and they are, risk, they are risking their life. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the best approach. You might say, well, but there is a lot of antibody. There's a lot of allergy. Now, one of the study that we have done here in Wayu Langone was to determine whether indeed there is some sort of cross reactivity with the allergy, the antibody that you have against the human organs and the allergy reactivity against the pig organs. And it doesn't seem to be the case. So we believe that actually for these type of patients that are very highly sensitized, are not getting any offer, mm -hmm. running that option, the pig sinotransplant might be the only option for these, wow. these patients. So I see the future as starting from there. And mm -hmm. as we get better at it, right? Because again, don't forget, it's not just a question of putting an organ inside. Right. Can we make this person's life better? Right. If that is the case, and we can prove indeed that that works, I assume that the Simpsons is going to start widening up, right? Mm -hmm. And going down the list. To, right. to the patients that are less sensitized. And of course, yes, I mean, my, my hope and my vision is that maybe one day anybody can be offered either possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you I, want, right? Yeah, I, I think that's our, our, all of our ultimate goal, right? We always think about our, our pie in the sky mission to end right. the hate list, right? And yeah, I, yeah I, that would be, can you imagine? Can you no. imagine if, if, and you know, maybe, maybe I'm not lucky enough to, to see that in my lifetime, mm -hmm. but I'm lucky enough to have started, I was part of this, this, this yeah. wave, but can you imagine a, a, a day in which there, there is no, 
there is no kidney disease out there because we can at least bridge it, at least bridge it between you having a human organ with pigs. But the, the, the idea is going toward the fact that we have to make those organs safe. Yes. And, 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 and then give anybody the option to choose based mm -hmm. on what they want you know what i mean but yeah that would be a that would be a dream come true yeah it really would yeah for people who want to read more about your research or read more about nyu langone where could they find information yes nyu langone it's nyulangone.org. It's very, it's very, it's very simple to find. But if you if you Google NYU New York City, that's the only NYU you find NYU Langone. And then uh, you can go to the Transplant Institute page, sub page, and there you're gonna find Dr. Robert Montgomery, which is our leader. And Dr. Montgomery, fun fact, is not only a very incredible surgeon and pioneering mm -hmm. on many, many things in kidney surgery, in kidney transplantation. He, he was the, f the first person that, he, I mean, he invented the domino chain many, many years ago or the laparoscopic procedure. But so he, he's been, he's actually, he's actually a patient himself. Dr. Montgomery has received heart transplants a few years ago. So Dr. Montgomery has been advocating for the longest time about quality of life and better transplant for everyone. So you will find the information right there. And um, NYU Langone has a very active LinkedIn page where they are posting all this news about xenotransplantation. So you might want to follow so that. Other than that, you can always reach out to one of us in the Transplant Institute and we can provide you papers, literature, and any other connection that you need. Amazing. That's fantastic. I think people will be very interested to, to read more and learn more. And it's always great also to hear that not only has somebody benefited from a, a transplant in their own life, but then they're, they're turning around and taking that personal experience to improve the lives of other people. So that's, yes, yes. That, uh, Candice, it's important. Yeah. It's important that we work on this together. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, for the longest time, I feel we, we that kind of worked in silos, mm. the medical uh, and the patient donor community. Mm. We need to work together because we, we teach each other how to make the future better. Mm -hmm. Your experience is important to us because it might shape up the way we do transplantation in the future. If we don't connect, we would never know and we cannot improve. But improvement this is the only way forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we know how to do a transplant right uh, the, the improvement is how to make it better how to make it last longer how to reduce immune suppression how to make patients life really really better after transplant that's the mission mm -hmm. that's the best possible mission we can hear from from your side of the table as well so thank you so much I'm wondering if there's anything else that you want to share with our Living Transplant podcast listeners before we head out. Yeah. First of all, I want to thank all the donors and mm -hmm. all the living donors, all the families of the deceased donors. You all are fantastic people. They think about it, Candice, in the moment of the most and the mm -hmm. deepest sorrow you find yourself uh, that that moment of clarity to say, I, I, I want to donate the organ of my loved one. And one, one single donor, one single patient, one single donor can save five to more lives. Mm -hmm. It's significant. All these uh, living donors that, that one morning wake up and say, you know what? I have two kidneys. I don't need them. Though. I can give up one and save somebody else. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about patients and, and it's important in my field to talk mm -hmm. about patients and, and, and patient life and, and improving and doing better, but we cannot forget the, the donor side. And mm -hmm. so I just want to say we are in this together. Talk to you, clinicians ask questions, 
express your concerns. Uh, there is no question that is, is, is not the right question. If you have something, if you're concerned about it, if you want to know more, uh, ask away. We are here on a mission to make sure that you have the same opportunity that I have, mm. right? So ask away and, and we're in this together and together we'll, we'll do great things. I'm Thank sure. You. Thank you so much, Massimo. Your, your passion comes through even over Zoom. <laughs> and we're really grateful as patients and families and donors to know that we have people like you on our side. So thank you for all of the work thank that you. you do. And thank you so much for sharing all of that work because it's, it's not just fascinating, but it's also hopeful for all of us to think about what could be in the future. So thank you so much for joining thank you me for today. It. And for everything thank you for you having do. me. Yes, thank yeah. you for having me. And thank you for everything else that I learned through this experience. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.